Hi guys, John here from Optics Warehouse. Today we're going to be looking at a quick fire review on three of the most popular first focal plate scopes from the recent British shooting show. We're going to go into some details on each one and um, sort of some pros and cons and see where we go from there and what we think is going to be the best option all round and it also gives you a chance to decide what the best option is as well. So let's start. We're going to start with the most popular one of the year as well so far is the Hawk Sidewinder. So the Hawk Sidewinder first focal plane, it lives up to all the hype that it's had. They're a really tr tried and tested scope, but now have a few nice little features and rounded off edges. So let's go start with the first one is the elevation turret. You see here, it's a nice little window there, uh, white at the top and red underneath. That red line increases and decreases with height once you use the locking turret and shows you what revolution you're on as you go. So a really nice revolution indicator there. And it is the only scope here with an indicator on. 30 mil tube, one piece. You've got 20 mil rad of adjustment in this. Uh, just before I forget as well, you've got 20 mil rad in the Diamondback and 23 in the Wolf Defender. But st sticking with the Sidewinder for now, side focus, illumination setting up to six, on and off between each one. As you all know, if you've been watching my videos, that is something I really like, so you can turn it on and turn it off without having to wind it around multiple times. So magnification range, six to 24, and then 56 mil objective. Generous magnification range there, and with 56 mil, does let in plenty of light. Reticle, Christmas tree style, which is getting all the more popular in first focal plane scopes. It does make it nice and easy to use the holdover, and obviously, as you're aware, if you're looking for a first focal plane, as you increase and decrease magnification, that reticle stays the same in increments, no matter what mag you shoot on. So it all, all gets bigger as you turn up the mag, and it all gets smaller as you drop it back down. So it keeps everything really quick, easy and precise. So with that, just what comes in the box, you get a throw lever with it as well. Larger side wheel, although it does make it a bit easier to turn to get a clearer image, you're not gonna be using it for range finding at 24 mag, not anything over 20 odd yards or 30 yards if you're using it for an air rifle. And as I say, you're only really gonna be using it to get rid of parallax error and just to clear that image up slightly. So you also get 100 mil sunshade and a set of bikini covers there. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna move on to the Vortex Diamondback 6 to 24. Now, the reason why this one always crops up, one, it's Vortex, it's got a huge following, two, the warranty Vortex has. Obviously it's lifetime warranty with that, but it doesn't matter what happens to it, you're still covered. Um, every year, Vortex, especially at their stand, have a look what's happened to this one, and it's normally the one that's been in a house fire. This is what the scope turned back to them from when it was sent back for the warranty, and they were sent a replacement one out. Now, if that doesn't scream great warranty, I don't know what does. Back to the scope though, 30 mil tube, one piece again, now you've got the 50 mil objective on this one, so it's slightly smaller than the Hawk, but it's a slightly more compact scope overall. So depending on your rifle setup and how you want it, you may find that a bit more comfortable to use. You can keep it cl uh, closer to the barrel to also assist in them holdover points. Side focus on here, 10 to infinity, once again, as per the Sidewinder and also as per the Wolf we'll be moving on to, they all come down to our rifle ranges. So, once again, magnification, it is a 6 to 24. Reticle style, once again, is a Christmas tree style. So plenty of aim points as per the Hawk, as per the Defender. Turrets on here, they're not lockable turrets. So that is a one up for the Hawk there. Clicks, nice clicks, but no indication of, of rotation. The Vortex, as I say, really real popular scope, mainly because of the name, also the performance you get out of it the glass quality you're getting out of it for that money. It's just an all-round win, especially, as I say, once again, with that backup. What comes with it? You've got your old-school bikini covers again, and also the sunshade, and that's your lot with the Vortex. Last, but certainly not least, we're moving on to the new Wolf Defender. So it's got the largest magnification range. This is a 4.8 to 26, so you've got that little bit more. Also 56 mil objective, it is uh, slightly shorter than the Hawk. So as you see, not a lot in it, but it is very slightly shorter. So you get a larger mag range and a very slightly more compact scope in length. However, it does weigh another half again onto what these two do. The reason for that, once again, one piece tube, 
but it's also on a 34 mil tube. So you will need slightly larger rings. However, it does give you that bit more support around it. It gives you that extra free MRAD of internal adjustment and also what feels like a much heavier duty built to last scope. So turrets on here, they're not lockable, but they do have a zero stop. Obviously the other two do not have zero stop. The zero stop does cut you down to one revolution. But with that, that's going to give you nigh on 10 mil rad of elevation on that. So that does help, uh, well, it does give you quite a distance to shoot out to without any issues. But if you do need more than that, by all means, you can take that out and it gives you the full range of the turret. So flip up covers on this model, nice magnetic ones, and they flip back. And once they're there, they're, back, they're sprung. So you're not going to bounce them. They're not going to come out, come out of the way or flap about as you walk. So it's a nice finish on that. 56 mil objective once again lets loads of lights in and magnification on here with this the power throw lever you get a nice smooth one for the hawk on this you get a huge unit there that, that really does give that extra bit of leverage so it's real minimal effort to turn that magnification ring reticle on these once again very similar to the last two but it's a, it's a little bit finer in them for me on the full mag i find this a much easier reticle to use on full mag looking through than the other two. With that, we're going to be going into more depth either later this week or next week, time permitting. Uh, obviously, back from the shooter show, we all are very busy. So, more than likely next week, but you will be seeing a video there of the view through the Defender versus the Hawk versus the Vortex. And that will give you a side by side of what it's actually like at the range and at given distances. Give you a more realistic idea of uh, reticle weight and also the field of view you're getting. One bit on here as well, just want to mention again, illumination on and off uh, as you go through. So once again, set it to where you like it, knock it on, knock it off, absolutely perfect. What comes in the box of this one? So you get most amount of accessories with the Defender. You get a 34 millimeter accessory mount. Obviously, if you're gonna pair it with any night vision, that's ideal because you can put an extra torch on there and give you that extra distance if needed. You get a 34 mil bubble level. So you can always tell whether you're counting the rifle and also helps you with the reticle alignment each time. You get the 100mm sunshade and also a nice little wolf LED torch. So, personally for me, for the all-rounder so far, is the Wolf Defender. Obviously you get more accessories, you get that 34mm tube, still lifetime warranty. Um, and then, to be honest, they are a, it is a close match between them. But the main point of pushing towards the Wolf, as I say, you've got glass quality there, how the scope is, the extra magnification range, extra features, and also it's the cheapest one of the three by quite some margin. So as I say, keep an eye out for the video of when we get down to the range and look through them and do a full real life, real time comparison. See what you think from there. If there is anything that we have missed and you wanna, uh, you want any more questions or you want us to go through any other comparisons, please give us an email, drop us a call, or leave a comment below. Thanks for watching.